It should go without saying, guys, that you have a serviceable uh, fire extinguisher fit for purpose uh, at hand. Ideally, you're conducting uh, these procedures uh, in an extremely well-ventilated area at the very least. Ideally, outdoors. Yeah, I know, I know. It's a bubble wrap world we live in. Um, I don't want to scoff at the notion of uh, making sure you take uh, necessary precautions here, guys. We're talking about pressurized flammable fluids. Um, nothing funny about the burn unit, that's for sure. Okay, so uh, today's vid, boys, is going to be about uh, conducting a uh, fuel injector balance test. Not to be confused with a flow test. But a balance test where we actually check the... Uh, the uh, relative flow uh, by comparing the injectors to essentially each other. Um, to do it, you're going to need a basic fuel pressure gauge and um, a timer uh, unit of some sort. Um, these tools are not expensive these days, guys, right? This is, uh, I'll show you this. <laughs> so as per usual, guys, I sell nothing on my channel. I push nothing to nobody. But if you're interested, uh, there's what I paid for it. Uh, just convert it to your local currency and uh, yeah there just search that on Amazon or your favorite online retailer you'll find it and uh, I've had this for quite some time now um, this was $40 Canadian $50 Canadian uh, not expensive so all in uh, I actually bought myself an adapter for the injector uh, just to make things a wee bit um, easier uh, a couple of T's so I can cobble everything together um, if you're lucky you'll have a Schrader valve uh, on your uh, fuel manifold that'll look something like this that you can actually couple to I've never ever had that kind of luck I've always had to kind of cobble together uh, some plumbing to actually uh, make this actually work so um, a test subject today as you <laughs> may have guessed is my Vitara because it's really easy to access um, you should be so lucky to have access to components on your vehicle like this guys It's a relatively large uh, engine bay and a relatively small engine. It's a four-cylinder uh, 2.4 liter engine, of course, so uh, four injectors um, Easily accessible on the fuel rail here. So just follow your rail Follow the line back and we're going to couple into the the line here that actually that's the supply line This is a returnless system. Uh, that's just an evap line. I believe if I'm not mistaken perch line and uh, we're just going to actually tap into the system here using the T. So there's a couple of different ways to depressurize your uh, your uh, fuel lines guys in order to get your uh, gear hooked up. I'm just simply going to pull the uh, fuel pump relay. I'm going to start the car. You come the ga gas cap and just depressurize the tank in order to take the vapor pressure, the head pressure off the tank. Start the car. Adequate ventilation, of course. If it will start, just let it die. I should do it. So, of course, guys, have some rags at the ready. You're going to have a wee bit of residual fuel, of course, that you're going to have to mop up. See, sometimes you can't win for losing, right? So I bought this connector, assuming it was going to be the same for the SX4 and the Vitara. Ah, that was a mistake. It's not quite the same. Anyway, fortunately, there's just enough room that I can uh, actually cobble a couple of crocodile clips in there and uh, still get uh, contact. So just a cautionary note here, guys. Uh, if you take a look at the 12 volt feet on the left hand side of the injectors here is blue and black wiring. So that's 12 volts. This is for the Vitara. OK, not to be confused with the SX4. Uh, you'll notice on the SX4 here. The blue and black wire there is actually the ground side of the injector 37 there. So, fair warning, they switch between the two different models. So, um, I'm going to use, uh, uh, I pulled out my packer, insert your dirty joke here, yeah I know, it's juvenile but I think it's funny. Uh, I've got the V-packer here guys which does have some bi-directional uh, controls. Uh, fortunately, it does have a fuel pump control, so I don't need to go in the car and constantly cycle the uh, the fuel pump. So why would I need to do that? So the whole idea of the balance test, guys, again, for the guys who are not familiar with it, again, I'm not a professional mechanic, and lots of guys who will be watching this aren't, so it's for their benefit, not for the guys who already know this stuff. Uh, the whole idea is to uh, basically uh, run the fuel pump momentarily, pressurize the lines, and the idea of the balance test is 
if all the uh, um, injectors are actually flowing at the same rate, we're going to have an equal pressure drop across the system. If an injector is flowing excessively, there's, um, there's tip wear or maybe some erosion on the pintle, we'll have an excessive pressure drop because there'll be more flow. Um, hopefully all four will be roughly the same, so we have nominal flow for all injectors. There's nothing wrong with this vehicle, guys. This is just my test vehicle, so I'm not expecting to see a significant split between the injectors. I think the accepted norm is about somewhere between 1 and 1.5 PSI. It's a pretty small drop um, between the two in order for things to be considered serviceable. Uh, if we have a greater drop uh, across one or more, then that's synonymous with... Um, uh, a leak as I said and if we have less drop that is to say there's a restriction of sorts it's likely that the uh, the filters and the tip of the inject inlet tip of the injectors themselves are uh, clogged or a restriction in the line or uh, or some such because we're actually dealing with the front end of the system of course right so it's important that you actually start the test at the same pressure Again, I'll, I'll repressurize the system here, guys. So uh, we're just initially pressurized at uh, what we at there, but 34 pounds ish. So I'll just hit the fuel pump on the V Packer here. You maybe hear the pump running, and you'll see the pressure go back up. By the way, all the lines are leak checked, of course. When I initially pressurize it, that would be the first thing you want to do. Okay, here goes the pump. So you can see it goes up to nearly 60 PSI, running just statically. Again, we don't have any leaks. That's important to keep checking that from time to time. But the pressure will drop off. Uh, it's really important that you start this test at the same pressure. Otherwise, the results will be meaningless, right? So the idea is I'm going to select mode 2. Um, mode You can select uh, four different modes on this uh, injection tester. What it does will basically... Pulse the injectors a set amount of time, uh, a set number of pulses for a set number of uh, time. Uh, mode 1 is 1 pulse for 250 milliseconds. Mode 2, which I'm using, is 50 pulses at around 7 milliseconds. Mode 3 is 100 pulses at 3.5 milliseconds. So that would be about roughly the same volume between uh, uh, passing the injector between modes 2 and 3, I believe. And mode 4 is continuous with a 7 uh, millisecond uh, pulse width continuous um, a wee bit of an anomaly on this thing which is a bit weird when you first get it guys is you can't change the rate once you've set it once you apply power you set your rate and then it's stuck on that rate so you have to lift the power uh, in order to be able to change the rate but that's fine I think they've done that intentionally because again if you change the mode the results would be uh, pointless if you change the uh, the uh, the number or pulse width of course right so let's see again what the pressure actually is just coming for 50 psi just approaching that i'm going to hit the button here you'll hear the injectors actually pulsing and you'll see the drop okay so we started at 50 psi and we dropped to 34 psi so we're going to rate that on our chart Four injectors, of course, uh, we have the initial pressure at 50 PSI and our second pressure, uh, when we actually dropped, it was uh, a 16 PSI uh, drop. So there's the numbers we're actually working for. Now keep in mind, this isn't a baseline. This is just number one. Number one can be faulty, in which case it's not going to make for a good reference for the rest of them. But it's just the stats for the number one injector. So I'll go through all the injectors. I don't think you guys need to see me doing that time and time again. And I'll come back with the numbers and I'll show you what it actually uh, translated to. I'm going to actually start the vehicle in between uh, each test, guys, for the simple reason. I don't want to uh, that much fuel, that raw fuel just sitting there. I'm going to start the car in clear flood mode each time and uh, get rid of that fuel that's actually sitting in the manifold. Okay, so that was the last cylinder there, guys. Uh, obviously, I'm going to disconnect the gear. Uh, you want to bleed the line down. I could either use the bleeder, of course, right, to release the pressure in the system. That tends to make a bit of a mess. I'm just going to pull the, the fuel pump relay again. 
which of course was reinserted for testing purposes. I'm going to pull the relay, let the uh, truck uh, bleed off the pressure, and then I'm going to disconnect everything, put it all back together. Of course, run the vehicle and leak check that everything is sunned. So remove the test gear, guys, and uh, of course prime the system if your car doesn't in fact prime this one does and uh, leak check it and then of course start it and leak check it while it's uh, while the vehicle is running make damn sure uh, that this is a sound connection as you can see in this case it's right above the exhaust manifold okay so before we delve into this guys let's let's just put this in context what this balance test is actually all about this is not going to be one of the first tests that you go to it's just not going to unfold like that, or at least it shouldn't. Um, you are going to resort to this test because you have reason to do so. Um, perhaps uh, you have a misfire code, uh, a DTC, that is leading you in this direction. What's going to cause a misfire? Well, it could be a number of things. One of them being uh, fuel, namely overfueled or underfueled that's why you could potentially resort to this and not only that you're going to want a bit more a bit more reason than that right um perhaps you've looked at an ignition waveform secondary waveform and it looks like a particular cylinder is burning lean or perhaps a few cylinders are burning lean but it's unlikely that you're going to resort to this when there's a common situation prevailing on the engine right that is to say all the cylinders are running lean that's probably more like a vacuum leak scenario, just, just as an example. Yeah, you're going to have direction before you head towards this. As I said, perhaps you have an ignition waveform that looks odd. Um, perhaps you have a DTC. Perhaps you have fuel trims that are pointing you in this direction. Now, keep in mind, fuel trims are going to be a result of a balance. If there's only one injector that's overfueling or underfueling, um, how much is it going to skew the fuel trims? Hard to say. It will skew it more... The fewer the cylinders, the more it will skew. Well, you know what they say about the best laid plants. So just disregard the small numbers in the upper right hand corner of the blocks there, guys. Uh, our numbers were all 50 to start with. And then we ended up with, uh, for one, two, three, four injectors respectively, um, a drop to 34, 33, 32, and 31, uh, which of course the differential pressure would have the same gap, 16, 17, 18, and 19 respectively. So. <laughs> Um, that's not really what I was hoping for. And it does strike me as odd. Statement. Uh, it does strike me as odd um, that we have this, as time went by, we seem to have this um, less and less of a drop. So uh, it's quite cold in my garage. Uh, I, I, I highly suspect there was a thermal factor at play here, either on the, uh, on the gauge are on the um, on the wee timer circuit itself. Perhaps uh, temperature was affecting the circuitry to where it was not quite pulsing to the exact same uh, uh, specifications. Uh, or I've got quite a strange scenario on the go with my car here. There is no issue with my car. Uh, the idle is perfectly fine. There's no DTCs. There's no perceptible issue with the car, but it's possible. But who's to say with these numbers? It's really impossible to say. So I've actually dummied up some numbers here for the sake of the explanation here, guys. And you've probably seen this elsewhere on YouTube. This is no really, like, I can't profess for this to be new material by any stretch of the imagination. But um, it's probably new to some of you. It's new to me. This is the first time I've ever done a balance test. So uh, again, full disclosure, just a just a weekender, right? Just, just a hobbyist, guys. I don't... I hope I, I, I don't come across as pretending to be a mechanic or anything, but, um, but I enjoy it. It's just an interest, right? So in this, in the upper right-hand corners here, guys, there are a couple of dummy numbers that I made up, right? So let's assume that these two injectors actually dropped to um, 34, so there'd be a, a differential pressure of 16, and this one was 30 and 38 respectively. So the one that would have excessive drop, I think it's, it's clear to see that it's likely that this one would have a leak of sorts. You know, again, wear on the pintle, uh, perhaps erosion on the pintle, um, something that's causing it to bypass uh, internally. So there's excessive pressure drop. And on this one here, for example, if it only dropped to 38, again, clear there would be um, a possible restriction in the filter, possibly in the uh, in the runner on the fuel rail leading to it, although that's probably unlikely. 
but there's a restriction of sorts. What to do? Could they be cleaned? Possibly. But I don't think guys have got much uh, um, uh, satisfaction from cleaning injectors, although it is possible. It certainly is possible. I don't want to imply it's not. Uh, removing them and, back, and blowing them um, backwards, back flushing them is a possibility or simply replacing the injectors. But if something like this actually transpires, if there is a restriction, if there is debris in the filters, you want to assess why, where did that come from? Putting a new set of injectors in and uh, in a contaminated system is not going to cause it, not going to result in anybody being happy at the end of the day. So uh, I realize this was quite lengthy, guys. I hope this made some sense. Uh, I'll try and cut it down in the edit. Um, but yeah, I'll leave it at that. And now uh, I'm open to suggestions to why these numbers transpired like this on my own vehicle. I was trying to be pretty diligent about keeping the uh, uh, the readings accurate. Um, but this is how it unfolded, you know. I, I really don't know what to say about that. It leaves me wondering. Right. I hope you got something out of it in any case, boys. That's it. Cheers. As I said, I'm more than uh, I'm all ears. If anybody has an explanation that uh, uh, they carry tender. Good night.